Good morning, folks. Welcome to Easter Sunday worship at Trinity United Church. On a normal Sunday, I would, before COVID, I would be thinking, gee whiz, where is everybody? Instead, today I'm feeling like we actually have a little bit of a crowd here. So thank you for being a part of the crowd, uh, for um, remembering that this is a special day, and uh, for making this a part of your Easter this year. Welcome everybody also who's joining us by Zoom and by Facebook Live, and welcome to those of you who are seeing us on Eastlink. I've been learning through the week that um, several of our congregation members wait for the service on Eastlink, so let me take this opportunity to thank Bruce Fleming once again for his faithful, devoted service to the Eastlink uh, broadcast for now a whole year. That's quite, quite something every, every week for a whole, I know you had two or three weeks off, but not too many, so really appreciate that. Uh, and while I'm doing shout outs, let me say how blessed we are to have such a fantastic um, tech team. There are one, two, three, five people, six people up there doing technology uh, in the balcony, making these services available for people who are um, not able to be here in person. Uh, and thank you to Leah Hagerman, who is um, taking a little time away from Ontario, working from her mother's home in New Glasgow, and uh, has been looking forward to helping with music on Easter weekend. Well, I'm not sure if she's been looking forward to it, but I know we've been looking forward to it, uh, hoping that her mother could convince her to stay long enough to, to have uh, Easter Sunday. And to Charlie, who's been faithful for every second week for a year now, and as always, uh, my colleagues Karen and Lynn, who um, have been a huge piece of the success of this past year. Uh, the service is, uh, I, think, I think we'll be able to get it done pretty much within an hour, but it's, um, it's got a lot in it, so I'm not going to be saying too much in between. Uh, the things that can go without announcement will. Let's begin with our first hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, which is how every Easter Sunday service is supposed to start. Sorry about that, Karen. You had a prelude ready. <laughs> okay.
I um, didn't realize that Karen had a different piece of music ready to go, so I'm going to say, Karen, if you want to go back, okay, then let's uh, join in the opening sentences. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Alleluia. Christ, our light, thanks be to God. Alleluia. Let us pray. God of surprises, we love this one, your yes to life in the face of death. As we come to understand your desire to be present to your people in the face of disaster, may we too see the possibility of new life. May we hear the truth that we were never created for normal, but that we were held in love and imagined in hope. As we gather this day, may we hear that great good news as if for the first time, and may we readily live into it. Amen. This morning, more than 20 centuries later, we follow in that tradition of remembering our baptism. And at this point, the water is poured into the font. Come, spirit of life, beyond all names, enfold us, impel us, refresh us. Remember your baptism and be grateful. Baptism is a new way of being, a new humanity fit for the glory and dignity of this one earth community and raised up a new creation grasping for life, that we might grasp the full extent of the mystery of being alive, creative, compassionate.
This morning we're, sir, we're sharing two uh, readings from scripture and I have invited Kathy Day, the grandmother of uh, both babies who are in church today, but um, especially the grandmother of Peyton to come and lead us in the reading from 1 Corinthians. A reading from the 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I have proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are, are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we, we proclaim and so you have come to believe. And from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, the first eight verses. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Hear these words that the Spirit might continue to inspire. Would you join me in prayer? God of Easter morning, we're delighted by the surprise of new life. May that delight in new life continue to give us hope as we remember the story of Easter morning and as we live into our own days of resurrection. Amen. There was a choice uh, in the lectionary for the gospel reading for today. I could either have read from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, which is probably three times longer than this one, or from Mark's Gospel, which is appointed for 
the gospel to be read in year B. Uh, and I have chosen Mark uh, because I like how Mark gets right to the point. He doesn't linger on details. We come to the original ending of the gospel and feel as though we might have read a compelling short story, but it's far from complete. There's no conclusion. There's no resurrection stories. There's no promises or assurances that he goes to prepare a place for us. No conversation with Thomas or any of the disciples as resurrection occurs. And like any short story writer, uh, Mark knows the value of leaving the story without neatly tied up endings and allowing that open end to draw the reader into wonder. How is this made complete? What would I have wanted the ending to be like? So those people who collected the stories and put them in the gospel created a longer ending, but it's not the original ending. A short story invites us to make our own conclusions. Thus, in this case, the instructions to go and tell the disciples that Jesus is going ahead of them to Galilee invites us to be reminded that he is already there, waiting. Yet the women who were first to witness tell no one, for they were afraid. No story about death has a neat and tidy ending, though, does it? This story is particularly uncomfortable. For Mark's listeners would have understood all too well the danger of a convicted criminal being raised from the dead. It's not a strong story to spread widely. The fact is no one is that great at sharing the story. Those who have grown to know Jesus and walked alongside him to watch his teachings and listen to him, they, have, they don't understand the story. They have a hard time with the good news. In fact, their record is one of betrayal and denial and apathy, and those are identifiable traits in these folks who gathered around Jesus. I don't want to be too hard on them. No relationship that changes your life that much will ever be adequately expressed in words. No one can ever fully describe how the transformation of love and meaning works within us. But those who would be most likely to proclaim this wonder, those were also among those who were betrayed, abandoned, who betrayed, abandoned, and denied, were among those who were seized by fear. Peter proclaims Jesus the Messiah, but then fails to understand what that really means. The demons understand who he is, but are probably not the most likely witnesses. So it's important to remember that this is not a story about resuscitation, a story that happens just once. It's a story of resurrection. And resurrection is not a conclusion, it is just the beginning. It's an invitation to something more, a life of coming to see what is possible, a fresh start, a new way of being. The Gospel writer ends in the same tone as he began by stating that this is the beginning. It's a fresh start for the disciples too, who having gone back to the little town of Galilee where not much happens anytime, proclaim Jesus, are waiting to proclaim, to hear Jesus proclaim to them what he told them in advance, that he would meet them there, and in fact, has gone ahead of them in the ordinariness of everyday life. A beginning, a new chapter, a transition time, the first day of a relationship with someone who has died. How is that possible? Yet it never seems to be too late for a new start. Today we're going to witness something beautiful. Katie Day has taken this opportunity to recognize that 
This is a fresh start for her, a new beginning. Her parents told her her whole life that if she wanted to be baptized, that would be up to her. And now she has chosen on the day when she and Jonathan will make vows to raise their daughter in a Christian family, that she would also like to bear witness to Christ at work in her life. So for her, the risen Christ is ready to meet her in the ordinary place of life as a parent, as a partner, as a working woman, places where she can claim and proclaim God's presence. Now, I don't expect that just because she's baptized, she's going to go about the workplace asking everyone if they've found Jesus. They might think something more happened to you than maternity leave when you come back. But I bet that you'll be slightly more aware of the moments of grace, of the times when you can say God is at work, of the moments when the risen Christ is made visible to you in the face of others. It's an invitation to trust that God will meet you. And along with Jonathan, the joys and challenges of family life will present many of those opportunities, I'm sure. And when you look back on it, you will, it will seem like you're ready to recall the times when in fact God's presence has already been felt in the things that everyone must deal with. Loss, abandon, grief, disappointment, but also love and new life, particularly the new life of a baby girl. The promise of the return of spring, the anticipation of more joy to come, the everyday moments of wonder and mystery are all present for us to witness again to the resurrection. Learning to see and trust that these ordinary moments are infused with sacred spirit that we call God is a part of the invitation to all of us. And it's no easy task when we walk in a world that seeks proof, that rewards materialism, that ignores the pain of the earth. It is easier to do as those first disciples did, deny, abandon, rebuke, or cower in fear, or perhaps the most common response to this promise these days is to just not really care. Apathy is rampant. But let me repeat those words spoken to Mary. Tell the disciples, I'll meet you there. I go ahead to Galilee. It's almost like the paths that we take to get to the place of belief, of witnessing God's resurrection present to ourselves, go through those long chapters of God's patience waiting for our fresh start, our new beginning, our moments of proclaiming the risen Lord in our own way. May each of you be more attentive, more aware of those moments of grace in your lives, in the ordinary moments. Amen. Strong.
Don Brown, who's uh, going to take part in this um, baptism service. Uh, Don's recovering from surgery and is at home, uh, but she's right there, look, ready to introduce uh, her kin to us. So she would be uh, Peyton's second cousin once removed. <laughs> you know how good that is? Something like that. Uh, would you, um, okay, Don, you're on. Katie Day comes today seeking to be baptized, and together with her husband, Jonathan, they also present their daughter for baptism. Hear these words from the stories of our faith. People brought little children to Jesus for him to lay his hand on them and say a prayer. The disciples turned them away, but Jesus said, Let the little children alone, and do not stop them coming to me, for it is such to these that the reign of God belongs. And then he laid hands on them. Baptism is the church's way of celebrating and naming the grace of God, living in all of God's children, no matter their age. It is the way we initiate new members into the life of the universal community of faith, and it marks the entry point into a lifelong pilgrimage of following the way of Jesus. May God be with you. And also with you. Life is a gift and we its celebration. May we rejoice in the beauty that we are. As the spring rain covers the land, we are reminded that water is a precious commodity. Water is everything. Water is life. Today we claim the joy of water and the way it sustains and nourishes us. Let it flow and pour and sprinkle for all people, that all may know each day the gift of God in water. The biblical stories of our tradition also talk of the preciousness of water. These stories remind us that water is a blessing and the source and strength of life, and without it, humanity and all that has evolved could not survive. So let's give thanks for these parents, for this child, for this gift of water. Let us pray. God of new life, we acknowledge our responsibility to ensure we use our resources well and make available future resources for our children and their children. We give thanks for the gift of this water. May it be the birthing waters of a new and holy life. Amen. Katie, I invite you to come to the front. And, mm, yeah, use that one that your mother-in-law used. So would you answer these questions for me? Caitlin Eleanor Grace, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do, by the grace of God. 
You can take your mask off. Okay. Trusting in the graciousness and the mercy of God, will you turn from the forces of evil and renounce their power? I will, God, be my helper. Will you follow the way of Jesus the Christ? I will, God, be my helper. Will you join with your brothers and sisters in this community of faith and celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, and love and serve others? I will, God, be my helper. And would you kneel at the bench? All of a sudden, I have a crowd. Just kind of lean forward, and I'll give you this towel in case I dribble. Okay. Caitlin Eleanor Grace, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the blessing of God, the source of life, Jesus Christ, love incarnate, and the Holy Spirit, love's power, be with you today. Katie, I mark you with the sign of the cross. From this day forward, you bear the sign of Jesus Christ. And may the power of the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful witness of Jesus the Christ. Amen. You feel like drying off? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now, if you can take your space right there beside me. Jonathan and Peyton, would you like to join us? And Jonathan, you can take off your mask. Jonathan and Katie, by what name is your child to be known? Peyton, Caroline, Ann, Day. Hey, come closer and say it again so everybody can hear. <laughs> Peyton, Caroline, Ann, Day. How did you come to decide on those names? Maybe, Jonathan, you can fill us in. So she's named after both of her grandparents, her grandmothers, Caroline from Katie's side, the Power family and Anne from my family, from my mother's middle name. And we gave the name Peyton to make her own. Peyton is her own, yeah. Little one born to love, surrounded by love, child of the universe, one with all that lives. We now name you Peyton Caroline Anne Day. Take this name and make it your own. Live in freedom and fullness, as you travel your journey of life. And may I ask, what is it that you ask for Peyton? So your answer is right there. We ask that she be baptized into the faith and family of God's love. Peyton, we welcome you to this family and this community, and we rejoice that you are here. The only disappointment is that I can't have you right in my arms. <laughs> Because I have to ask your parents to come close to the font and hold you. Yeah, so if you just kind of, maybe you can come over there, um, Katie, you know, just on the other side of the font. And just, the, just football, footballer. There we go. So that. <clears throat> Peyton, Caroline, and Day. In the touch of this water, the ancient symbol of new life, life, I baptize you into the love, service, and joy of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. That's good. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Okay, you can hold her up. Peyton, may the presence of the spirit of love be nurtured and constantly affirmed by your family, your friends, and by us, your church community. 
May the sun and the stars delight and touch your heart with fire so that you may find passion to be creative and know God's blessing. Day to come and join Jonathan and Katie at the front. <clears throat> Lauren's not here yet. She hit the weather. The weather has kept Lauren from being here, although I'm sure she wishes she were. <clears throat> so it's all up to you. You're going to take the vows on behalf of you and Lauren, okay? All right. So first I'm going to ask these uh, questions. Um, to Jonathan and Katie as you respond to the gift of baptism. Jonathan and Katie, I invite you now to honor this journey of faith by making these affirmations. Will you provide for Peyton a welcoming home of love and trust, sharing with her the stories of life, yours and ours, and the wisdom and faith of those who've gone before us? If so, will you respond? We will. Will you help Peyton grow in her understanding and appreciation of a broad religious faith? If so, please respond, we will. We will. Will you encourage her to reach out to others with love and compassion and care for the earth? If so, please respond, we will. We will. So Mike, you, I'm going to ask you this question, but really you're responding for all of those people who will love and support. Peyton, and it's not all on your shoulders. Whew. You have enough, right? Uh, Mike, do you, you have been asked by Jonathan and Katie to be a godparent for Peyton, along with Lauren Power. Will you do everything possible to ensure that she is nurtured so her faith is open, healthy, and strong? We if, will. We will. You're confident that you can answer for both of you. <laughs> yes. I'm going to ask all of the rest of you uh, to respond to this question. Each of us knows the need for support and care as we share in a journey of faith. As this family gathers around this font and this water symbols of belonging and community, let us pledge our care for them. We stand as witnesses to the commitment this family has made this day. We pledge ourselves to your support and care as they discover the ways that the spirit unfolds for them. And now uh, may this newly child, baptized child be blessed. May she always know that the source of all of love lives and comes to unique expression in her. Amen. May Katie and Jonathan be blessed. May they always show their gratitude for the life given them by loving and caring for Peyton. And amen. And may this gathering of faithful people be blessed. May we all live in love. And may we continue to draw encouragement from the faith which connects our loving with the sacred mystery we call God. Amen. This is a day of great celebration for us and the Power and Day families. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Jonathan, since I can't do this, I'm going to invite you to just stand close to the front, turn her around so everybody can see her beautiful face, and uh, take the time to, um, to welcome her. Yeah, slide through the mics. Give yourself a little freedom. <clears throat> She's the star of the show. Sorry about that, Katie. It's a bigger deal for you, but she's the star. It's probably not the first time you're going to be upstaged by your little daughter. We have a tradition at uh, Trinity that we present a lighted candle to the parents of the baby who's baptized. So um, I'm going to get you to, care, to hold. Let me see. This, is, this one is to remind you of your baptism. Uh, can we can we find Dawn on there again? Dawn has some words. Oh wait. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Dawn. Oh, you're still muted. Just a second. There we go. Katie, may this candle remind you to love your life with Jesus, who opened people's minds and hearts to see the light of God's presence within them. Katie and Jonathan, use this candle to help tell Katie the story of the baptism. It will be quite the story. There's lots to tell. Thank you, Dawn. That worked great. And you can blow them out and put them in the box. And I have uh, your certificates of baptism, but uh, if it's just as well with you, I'll wait and give them to you later in the week after I've had a chance to get Debbie Van Volpen, who's not here because she had an illness, to sign them, okay? She's representing our worship committee. So I'll hold them and, well, you can have them and then I'll get them back at the end of the service, okay? Okay, we're all done. And let's sing, Joy Comes with the Dawn.
the prayers of the people this morning. What was dead shall be raised to new life. What was dark shall shine. What was forgotten shall be remembered. Let us offer our prayers for all our world, confidently saying, God of new life, you are our light out of darkness. God of new life, you are our light out of darkness. For all peoples in all lands, where relationships have been marked by hurt or misunderstanding, may they be refreshed through forgiveness and reconciliation. Where relationships have been neglected or ignored, may eyes be open to the great gift that we have in each other. On this day of resurrection, May we look forward to a future lived in peace and concord as children of the same creating God. God of new life, may our light our darkness. For our world, made in make great beauty, wherever it has been disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, we pray that it will be restored to the fullness of its glory through justice, love, and peace. As children of the resurrection, we are called to be agents of this change. God of new life, you are our light out of darkness. For all who gather as Trinity United Church, remembering especially this morning our newly baptized, and in our Pictou County Council of Churches cycle of prayer, for all who gather as Bethel Presbyterian Church in Pictou Landing, may we be glad witnesses of God's goodness and God's sign of life in our community. May we bring the promise of new life to all whose needs keep them from seeing themselves as the image of God and worthy of being loved. God of new life, you are our light out of darkness. For all those in high places of authority, honoring the gift of the risen Christ, may their minds and hearts be stirred to works of justice understanding and the equitable sharing of resources. Where the pandemic presents new problems and complicated and challenging decisions, may wisdom, compassion, and cooperation guide their way. God of new life, you are our light out of darkness. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, we pray for all who are journeying from illness to health from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, and from exhaustion to rest and renewal. May they never lose hope in a God of life and transforming love. God of new life, you are our light out of darkness. God of new life, we thank you for the mystery planted in us, the paradox of new life from death and community from scattered disciples. We proclaim that the world has been changed forever through Jesus, the risen one. And may our witness be as bold, our love as deep, and our faith as strong as his. And now let us pray together the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us take a moment to reflect on the many gifts that uh, we have in our midst and to think about the ways that we offer those gifts, our time, our talent, our treasure to the church and to the world. And uh, as I've been saying for a year now, there are many ways to uh, present your gifts. Uh, Lynn does have a plate that she'll hold up at, at the exit as you leave the sanctuary or uh, the many ways to offer online as well. Let us move then to the sacrament of Holy Communion. The earth has gone the round of seasons, from the vibrant green of spring's new life, to the lush richness of warm summer, to the brilliant fulfillment of a late slow autumn, to the sleepiness and self-giving of winter. And now we stand touched by the promise of new life in the spring. It is fitting then that as we celebrate the renewal of life and hope, we also celebrate the presence of the spirit of life and hope and creativity being resurrected everywhere around and within us. Loving and caring God, how fertile your genius. You shape everything. You fill the world with what you do. You search out and know us. All that we are is open to you. When our days become so busy and our spirits are parched and dry, may we be flooded with the downpour of encouragement. When we take things for granted and gratitude goes to sleep, may a new song be put on our tongues. When life's abrasive pressures fray us, loosing our hold on the still center, May we be told again about sparrows and nesting robins, about daffodil and hyacinth blossoms, and the parent who knows our every need. No matter who you are or where you are on this life's journey, you are welcome here at this table with its symbols of God's creative and inclusive presence. In the company of all who seek nourishment at this table, we come to celebrate community and to share these life-giving symbols. Let us intentionally connect with one another as a sign of God's peace. The peace and presence of God is here to stay. Thanks be to God. It is right and our joy to give thanks world-gazing, hope-cheering God. We celebrate the changing, and mood of, changing mood of nature, the sunshine and showers of a spring day, the nesting and cheerfulness of birds, the wildflowers and well-planned gardens, green shoots springing forth. And we give thanks, Holy One, we give thanks. We who hold all such good things in trust and in the company of each other, and in company with people throughout the world, declare as generations before have declared, holy, 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 hope breathing God, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God, Hosanna in the highest. We celebrate our knowledge of Jesus, our companion, who taught all to care for birds of the air and lilies of the field, 
living expressions of the spirit of life in our midst. And we remember the night among friends reclined at table, Jesus again shared a meal with his friends through grain and grape, bread and wine. And in fellowship together, Jesus spoke of his enduring love for each of them. So we take this bread and we take this wine, mindful of the spirit at work in our lives, thus making our living a source of renewal and hope. We break this bread in celebration of a great truth that on this tiny planet, hurling through cold, empty space, space, death is made the servant of life, and out of death, life is forever resurrected. This cup, with its fruit of vine, is a celebration of things that are not always as they seem, that out of faithfulness and steadfastness, out of suffering and sorrow, may come unsought blessings. To eat and drink together reminds us of the deeper aspects of human fellowship. For some time and for time immemorial, the sharing of bread and wine has been the most universal of all symbols of community. Let us now share the bread and the wine. Let us pray. We give thanks that we have gathered together in this sacred place and have been refreshed at this table. We rejoice in the giftedness of each person gathered. We are grateful for who we are and for each other. May we go forth into the world in courage and peace. Amen. and we'll sing the day of resurrection. See you. 
Let me offer you these words of blessing. Go out from this time together to the things which are special or ordinary to you. Build relations of inclusion and reconciliation and a lifestyle that loves and treats people and the earth gently. And remember always that we are members of the body of Christ. And may the Holy One surprise you along the way. Amen. One quick little surprise before we get to the uh, duet that's promised. Karen, you'll, I'll have to ask you to play your postlude at the beginning of our service next week that you prepared for Easter Sunday, with my apologies, or your prelude. There's the Easter Bunny, don't you think? <laughs> he was spotted on the East River. And I thought, since he was spotted, we better show his picture. With thanks to Joanne Cumminger. Okay.
Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Thanks, thanks for being with us. Happy Easter, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I see Trevor and Grace. Grace. And, 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 and uh, hello, hello to the family. family. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. That, 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 that,